Welcome to another Match Masterclass where I am urging anybody who avoids fishing on slopes to stop doing so because they can be the ultimate place to fish in your swim. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through exactly how I go about doing it. Let that bait hook bait. Oh wow, we've, <laughs> we've had a fish take it on the way down. But what I was trying to do there, we'll explain it on the next one, is you need to let your hook bait swing in to the bank. Okay, so fishing on a slope. As I mentioned, I see loads of people avoiding fishing on them, certainly if they're steep, but for me, it's the ultimate place to fish in your swim. Certainly on lakes like this, with canal style, where the far bank comes up into a steep shelf. It's one of probably the most common scenarios you're gonna be faced with, but I fished this lake literally at the weekend. I've looked down there and so many people are plumbing up to the bottom of the slope where it's nice and flat, Yes, you will catch fish there, but you're missing out so much opportunity by not fishing on the slope. If you think how a fish feeds, to, fish, to feed sorry, on a flat bottom, they have to actually upend, put a bit of effort in and feed. But on a slope, they can come in at a standard angle they'd normally be swimming at and just pick bait off the slope. And it's really, really good for showing up bite indications. So hopefully I can give someone confidence if you're not already fishing on the slopes, how to do it because Certainly when they're very steep, you have to be super, super accurate. So before I get fishing now, probably the most important thing to get right is actually plumbing it up and getting it ridiculously accurate. You have got to be within like centimeters every single time. And I'll talk to you through that about it at the moment as we go. But first of all, plumbing the depth, one thing to use. I use a 30 gram plummet, but the main thing is, is you need a nice flat bottom because when that lands on the slope, you want it to stick so it's not rolling about. So any sort of plummet, but as long as it's got a nice round body or flat body, body sorry, at the bottom so it sticks onto the slope. But like a dinner plate bottom of a plummet is perfect. So I've already plumbed this particular line up because obviously we want to save you a bit of time, but I'll show you how accurate you need to be. So first of all, when plumbing from the slope, don't flick your plummet away from you. You want to drag the plummet and then make sure everything is directly below your pole tip. Now, where my right hand is, this is my fishing position. It's on a perfect join of the butt, the butt of my number seven section. And I plumb up to the middle of the body of my float. So if you look at that now, that is absolutely perfect. The plummet is just sticking, so the slope's not so steep that it's rolling off. It will sit there and it will fish. So as long as I swing the rig into that, which I'll explain much more as we're fishing, that is perfect. But just to show you the difference, if I go, what's that, six, eight inches past it and plumb up, there we go, look, the whole float is sticking out of the water. It's a big difference. And if we reverse that the other way, we go slightly further back. So we're now coming off this shelf. The float's going underwater by probably a float length as well. So you've got to be ridiculously accurate. And there we go, back on that join right here in my hand. That is absolutely perfect. Now we've got three different rigs today. That one is perfect because it fits on a join, but what you need to do, the other rigs, I've got tape exactly where I'm fishing. And all I'm doing is, is that's the deepest rig on the join. As I'm going up the slopes, we're getting shallower. I've got no point where to hold my pole. So marking it with pole tape is so important. So I've got pole tape here at my hand. And then the final rig is right up against the far bank in the shallow water and again we've got tape there so that's how accurate you have to be you have to actually tape it because if you are just literally an inch off you could be two or three inches over depth or you could be having it two or three inches that's not actually touching the bottom so get the plumbing right and you're onto a really good start into fishing on a shelf so that's the sort of technical bit out of the way of plumbing up let's try and catch a couple of fish and hopefully then we can talk to you much more detail about how you actually fish it, feed it, and the rigs that you need for it as well. That 
That's a cool little carp to start and it's given me the confidence that there should be a few fish there to show you how to fish effectively on these slopes. So let's go out there again. Single maggot on the hook. We're gonna go through baits later in the video, but feeding wise at the moment, I've got a few maggots, capping it off with pellets and I'm putting a couple of casters in there as well. But I said at the start, We've got three rigs today, and that's at three different depths. That's really important. Unfortunately, we're out of the best weather. It's cold now, and this is gonna get more and more important to get the depth right. So this first rig that I'm starting on, it's not at the bottom of the shelf, but it's certainly the deepest bit before it flattens off. So I've gone out to my far back market. My right hand here is right on the joint, so I know exactly where I'm feeding. I'm gonna lower that pot in and we're gonna tap it in. Now I'm gonna just lift the rig out, just a float length, and we're gonna let that bait, hook bait, oh wow, we've, <laughs> we've had a fish take it on the way down. But what I was trying to do there, we'll explain it on the next one, is you need to let your hook bait swing in to the bank. There's no point swinging past it and creating slack line, because all you're gonna do is create an absolute mess. But that, I mean, that was pretty much perfect what happened there, because just as you can imagine, my maggot swinging in, probably near enough, just touched the bank. It watched it come down nicely. The rig is supporting that as well, which I said we will go into detail. And it's grabbed it just on the way down. That couldn't have worked much better. But hopefully the next cast, we can actually, um, we can actually get the float in there and talk to you about very important things about how accurate and how stable you have to be. Wow, it's windy today. It's got proper sort of winter is coming conditions. It's windy, it's bright, low sunshine, but that is fish number two. Now come to the net and a nice chunky winter common. Should we show you this one? Let's just take a couple of minutes out to, if I can juggle it around my top kit. There we go, look. That one took it on the drop just as the bait was coming into that shelf. And I generally do think, this is why I said, I think it's one of the best areas in your swim to fish because they're almost looking at it, you know, not like when they're feeding flat on the bottom, they're literally looking at the bait as it's swinging on the slope. It's at their eye line. Now, let's sort myself out, getting a bit of a tangle around my top and my pole, but we're ready to go again. So single maggot, I very rarely say this, but Hopefully we don't catch one as quick this time because we do want to show you what we're doing with the rig. So a few maggots, a couple of casters, cap that off with pellets. And this is how we're gonna be feeding at the moment just because it is ridiculously accurate. Just dry my hands off. Right, here we go. So we're shipping out the same far back marker. I've picked the middle of one of those stakes on the far side. The sunlight is right in my eye, but here we go, I've got the join of my pole right there, turn my pole over, just lower it in the water so the bait comes out and we lift that rig out. Now what's happening is that hook bait is swinging in to the shelf and just as it tightens up, we lower it in. So if the wind allows me now, you do not move that float. It's so important not to move it because you've just lowered it in, it's touched nicely. If you Oh, we missed a bite there. If you miss a bite, exactly what we did there, you have to bring the rig back towards you and let it swing back into that slope. There's no lifting and dropping or anything like that because you need to make sure it's all nice and tight and that should show up nice bite indication. I've actually left a little bit more of my bristle showing today because I know everyone always says, I really like to see the bite. So hopefully you can see on camera what we're talking about when I'm I'm saying hold it still and wait for, wow, this wind is dreadful. But if the wind, there we go, had another bite. If the wind did blow me off, again, I would just reset and I would swing that rig back in towards me. But that's a, that's a pretty good start. What is that? Way, I'm feeding top kits in the lake. <laughs> Everything's going in. Uh, it's windy today. Right, let me just move these top kits out. We don't want to be losing those. And back to it, back to the fishing. What have we got? A tiny little mirror carp hooked in the top lip. If you can see that, if you are hooking fish in the top lip, you are doing something right. That would have been because my rig was all nice and tight and everything was perfect. So I'll go out once more because 
hopefully I'm explaining it as I'm doing it. I know this is a lot of information all in one go and I always say it on any of the videos. If there's anything that I brush over or you, you didn't quite understand and you want a little bit more information on it, please do let me know in the comments because I will always happily answer them myself. But we just basically repeat that process until the fish tell us otherwise. So if we were missing plenty of bites, it might indicate that the fish are charging around a bit and they've gone into slightly shallow water, which might happen as the water warms up. But we pick the same far back marker, we tap the pellets in, and it's just, again, I sound repetitive, but this is the bit. Hold it just out of the water, let it all tighten up, lower it in, and do not move it. If anything happens to why it's moved, Mr. Bite, exactly what I'm doing here, reset it and try again. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll fish at this now, see if I can catch a few fish, and then if we have to, because bites indicate and bites slow up, missed bites that they're in different depth then we will change but until anything tells me to change this is what i'm happy to do fishing at the moment feeding like this fishing at a slightly deeper point in the shelf and we'll try and put a run of fish together and if anything changes there's another one we're flying at the moment but if anything changes then we will talk you through about what i do next and then how we change it when we go further up the slope That was a good little section, but I quite quickly changed to the one rig further up the slope, just because I had a few missed bites, a foul hook to fish, and I just thought, although there's no bait gone further up the slope, they just get a bit excited when they get the smell in there. And if you get in line and some missed bites, quite often you can find that those fish have gone further up the slope. So I said to you I've got three rigs here. I'm gonna go through the rigs in a moment. But what I did want to show you is you can see here the depth change within the small window that we've got. So we're probably fishing really tight to the furthest one off is about two foot. And we've got one float up here. And we've got one float down here. So the, the deepest one I've got here, if you don't use top kit markers, you probably need to, is 39 inches and the shallowest is 24. So that's the depth difference in about two foot. So it's a relatively mediocre slope, should we say. It's definitely not like really steep, but as far as slopes go, realistically, as long as your plummet will hold on the slope, then it's fishable. So if it's even steeper than what that is, it doesn't matter. As long as you can find a base and your plummet holds, I'll be happy to fish it. But let's talk about rigs. Now they're all exactly the same. So I'll talk you through what we've got. Now, Elastic Choice, Orange Slick, the 12 to 14, that's just because it's perfect for the size of fish we've got in here. 012 Mainline, there's nothing massive. It's quite nice and neat fishing, and 012 is absolutely fine. Now, the float is really important. I use a carbon stem float. This is actually really light, especially for how windy it is, but it's not very deep. It's only 0.2 gram. Uh, but it has got a nice thick bristle just because these waves are quite choppy. So a carbon stem float in a point two, I like for this sort of shelf fishing where it's not really deep. Now shotting pattern is spread out number tens pretty much through three quarters of my rig because I want to create a nice slow fall as that maggot just touches onto the slope. So I want it to fall down naturally. You saw that one of the first fish we had there, it grabbed it on the way down. So because if that, it's that way of feeding and sort of swinging bait and a bit of movement, I just like it to look nice and natural. So spaced out number 10s is the reason for that. A short four inch hook link and a size 18 hook. So, I mean, it's not that complicated really. It's a standard sort of shelf fishing rig. One addition I have got, this is an absolute must in conditions like that today. Two number eight back shot. I hope you can see how windy, as I nearly lost my hat. 
without that, without these shots, I wouldn't be able to hold that rig still. I mean, it's hard enough as it is. It's really blowing when it gusts up. So let me try and show you the importance of those shots and hopefully we can go out and catch one. So normally, one thing that is worth mentioning, when I fish the two shallower spots that I'm, I'm now on the second one and the one even shallower, what I would like to do, whoa, hold on to your hat, is I would like to pick up a catapult and feed bait rather than do it for a toss spot on the shallower lines. But in weather like this, I, I wouldn't feed maggots on a, on a five-a-side football pitch area. Like it would be ridiculous. So I have to try and feed it this way just to keep it a bit more accurate. So we're putting a few maggots in, some casters and some micro pellets. We're gonna come on to what bait I've got next. But pellets are very, very good because they stick on the shells and maggot, it's just that, isn't it? Everyone, everything eats maggots that time of year, and it's the go-to bait. So let's try and get out there if the wind allows me. And we're gonna now we're on the sort of the middle rig, should we say? So we're going past the join the section, and this is where I've got this pole tape here. So I'm in my fishing position. I've got my far bank marker. We turn it over, and we tap that bait in. Ship the rig back. And we're just doing exactly the same. So holding the float as still as we can in this wind, just out of the water, try and let it all tighten up. And now because I've got that back shot on, I can hold my pole upwind of my float and it creates a real anchor point. So although my pole tip is blowing all over the place, my rig is relatively still. I mean, within reason, when it gusts, it's blowing me out of proportion, but out of the way. And what I'm having to do is just reset the rig. But I don't mind that too much like if it's if it was perfect fishing conditions then you know the, the more accurate you are the better and i would feed with a catapult like i said but one thing i would say is when you're feeding with a catapult i would be feeding it completely to the far side as far over as i can because you can never be as neat as you are with a little toss spot that we've got on so even if half my bait was going on the bank i wouldn't mind that there's a bite because you don't want to be feeding this side of your rig because obviously they, the bait's naturally going to come down the shelf as it is. So if you're, foot, if you're feeding the catapult, feed it all the way over and then naturally the bait's going to trickle down the slope. So I'd be feeding maggots probably in the catapult and they'll naturally just come down onto your fishing area. So you can either fish them in a the really shallow water if they wanted to or with you know without really trying to you're baiting up the two deeper spots as your bait falls down that slope certainly if it's really steep so that was pretty good like the, it's been better on this sort of way i'm feeding my top kits again <laughs> when it's been this depth it's probably only eight ten inches shallower than the first rig we had on but the fish have just been a little bit bigger i'm not getting many liners and we're hooking them in the mouth. Like I said, the only reason I'd go shallower is if we were, for any reason, missing bites or getting foul hooked fish, then I would go shallow because that's probably what they're doing. They're chasing that bait around. But there you go, that's a chunky F1. Perfect little fish and a mega little way of fishing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this one put in the net and then we'll have a look at that bait that I was talking about. So let's take a little look at the baits then. And I've already sort of mentioned what we're using, but for anyone who wants a bit more information, let's have a detailed look at them. So, first of all, pretty much the only pellets I use as the weather starts to get colder, F1 Sweep from Dynamite, my absolute go-to in the micro pellet. They're brilliant for sticking on a shelf micro pellet. They are already flavored, but I can't resist boosting them with a little bit of pellet soak in the same flavor, the F1 Sweep. So all I do with that is cover the pellets in water completely just over the top, mix some liquid in, give it a stir, and then just leave them for 20 odd minutes and they are absolutely perfect. They grip easily, they're sort of over wetted and they're really good to go in a toss spot. Otherwise, we've got some casters. I don't actually use that many casters, but this particular venue, they're mega. They absolutely love them. It's a real mixed fishery. Eyed, F1s, carp, skimmers, so that's just really good for this venue. I've got my standard maggots. I think they are the best bait 
this time of year you just can't beat them and everything eats them so you can't go fishing without those but if you follow the match masterclass you may remember and i always like to do it i like to flavor boost some maggots up and i'm using these on the hook today i've done it loads of times but all i do with them is i put them in a plastic bag or a little see-through seal bag put a bit of liquid on them shake that all over the maggots to coat them then put some dry ground bait on top of that and shake them again and that then creates little flavour boosted maggots. I understand that the ground bait's going to come off in the water but they've definitely sort of got a little coating on them and it's just something that I'm confident in and has worked well for me. So let's see if we can go out there and catch another one. Hopefully that wind lets me. So single maggot hooked in the thin end. There's a good tip for you. If you ever hook your maggots the other way change it and put them in the thin end what i'm putting in the toss pot is about 10 maggots 10 casters maybe five to ten and then just capping it off with the micros and we're going to go out there and this is probably a question for you watching now is i should probably learn and look at the weather forecast before we go out fishing but that's not really a true reflection of a fishing style is it because a lot of us can only fish at the weekends match style let's say and you're thrown at whatever weather is given to you so would you prefer it like this and that's naturally how it is or would you like to fish on a perfect day and show it all nice and neat but yeah we'll cut that bait in the back shot is going above my float and like i said although my tip of my pole is blowing quite a lot here we go we've got another one the rig itself is pretty stable despite being as windy as it is now the only time i move that rig once it's in as i've said so many times and i might sound like a bit of a broken record but it is important it's once that bait is touched onto the shelf you leave it and then you only move it if you get a bite or your rig has moved off spot for any reason there's no lift and drop in there's no finesse fishing it's just set your trap and it should work every time a little mirror to prove it right there but hopefully we're going to catch a few bigger than that so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to have a little go and show you just how good fishing on a slope can be So there we go, that is fishing on a slope. Just get just one of these nets back in. It's been a real good few hours fishing. And like I said, it's an area where people definitely avoid. And I really do urge you not to. Hopefully that's giving you the confidence to get out and try and fish on the slopes, no matter how steep they are. Really hope you've enjoyed it. Hit that like button, drop us a comment if I've gone over anything and you want more information on it. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll be back very soon for another Match Masterclass.